we have another cool example, example number three. So in this example, we have two pipes, this one and this one. These are cross sections of pipes. That's why they are circular. So the flow is moving into the screen. OK, and these two pipes are connected to each other using a manometer. And remember, I told you if if the two ends of a manometer is connected to a pipe, that would be a differential manometer. So we have a differential manometer. We are going to find the difference in pressure between points A and B, center of the pipeline. OK, so we have two different types of liquid. We have a liquid that has been indicated using a beige color. That liquid is our manometer liquid in CD. So this basically liquid is our manometer liquid. Okay, so the density of that is going to be the density of manometer liquid. We have another type of liquid that is in our pipeline. So this bluish color, this is going to be our main liquid, right? The liquid that is in the pipeline. So I'm going to call it pipeline liquid or pipeline liquid. So the density of that would be density of PL, density of PL. Perfect. So let's write down the equation, the pressure equation. We are going to move, I am going to move from point B all the way to point A. You can move from point A to B too. It doesn't matter. All right. Uh, so pressure at point B, we don't have it. Now, I'm going to go up, right? I'm going to up all the way to point D, and the point D is over here, right? I know that pressure at point D is exactly equal to pressure at this point. Why? Because they are exactly at the same horizontal plane. So I do not need to go all the way to point D. I just need to go from this level up to here. And then this and this will cancel each other out. So I don't need, even need to consider that. So because I'm going up, it's going to have a negative sign. And uh, I need to write gamma. And gamma is a specific weight. And specific weight is equal to rho times g. So I know that rho for uh, this is going to be rho of my pipeline liquid. Let's write it a little bit better pipeline liquid times g times h of b to d perfect now from point d i need to move all the way to point c interface between my manometer liquid and pipeline liquid however again i do not need to move all the way i just need to move from here to this point why that point? Because that point has the exact pressure at point C. They're both on the same horizontal uh, plane. In other words, if I go down over here, then when I go up over here, these two cancel each other out. So I don't even need to consider those. Perfect. So because I'm going down, it will be positive. Then I am moving in the manometer liquid. So I need to change the row. Row would be for manometer liquid. And then G. And then H would be... Uh, basically from D to C. D to C. Cool. And then last, I'm, I need to move from C to A. This is interesting as well. So um, C is over here. I just need to actually, because this point and this point over here, they're going to have the same pressure. I just need to move down this much right why because this and this cancel each other out right so again because i am going down i'm going down this way over here so the pressure is going to be positive and i'm moving in um pipeline liquid so rho pl times g times h ac or ca whatever you want to write and then this, remove this, this would be equal to pressure at point A. Cool. Now, I'm going to simplify this equation and move things on one side of the equation and rewrite it and show it to you. As you can see, I rearranged the equation. Specifically, 
I moved P A to the other side of the equation and the other terms to the other side, this will give, give me delta, this will give me delta P, right? The difference in uh, pressure, right? So now that I have written that, I am going to plug in all the information that the problem has given me, including all the rows, G, Hs that I have, and show you the final result. Perfect. So after plugging in all the numbers, I can write that PB minus PA, in other words, delta P from B to A is 1.03 kilopascal or KPA. Okay. Um, note that because this number is positive, it means that pressure at point B or in pipeline B is larger than pressure at pipeline A. All right, so this is how you can use your knowledge of fluid mechanics right now to compare pressure in two pipelines. In this example, we have an inclined tube manometer and we are going to use that to find out the difference in pressure between points A and E. Point A is in a tank full of water and point E is the center of a tank full of natural gas. Okay, one thing before we start. Whenever we have a system consisted of uh, a liquid and a gas, because the gamma or specific weight of liquid is way, way, way higher than specific weight of gas, we assume that the gamma of gas is almost zero. This will help us in our calculations, and I will show you how. So the distance from this point, E, to this point, which is my point D, is H, E, D, right? Now, let's write down the equation to find out the pressure at point uh, D. So I'm going to start from point E, point pressure at point E, because I, I am moving down, it would be plus gamma of natural gas times H E D equals to pressure at point D. Okay. I just told you that whenever we have gas and liquid together, we assume that the gamma of gas is zero. So if I assume this is zero, then this equation will give us that pressure at point E is equal to pressure at point D. This assumption makes our job way easier. Now we know that point E has the exact same pressure as point E. Okay. so. I'm going to start writing the equation, uh, the hydrostatic equation, and move down from point A. So, starting from point A, pressure at point A, I am moving down from point A to this point, right? So, it would be positive, and it would be gamma of water, and my H is from A to B. Now, Again, I'm going to move down, move down in my mercury two inches. So it would be positive, this time mercury, and then my H is going to be from B to C. Now, I need to move up, but make sure that we are not going to consider the inclined distance. So we're not going to move up like this. We move up in Z direction, Z direction, only vertical. So to calculate the vertical distance from C to D, let's draw this triangle. This would be my triangle, and this is H, C, D. H, C, D can be calculated as 14 inches times sine of 20 degrees, because we have the slope, right? And then that would be my HCD. So moving up from point C, so the sign would be negative, and we are still moving in mercury. This time it would be times HCD, 
And finally, this would be equal to PD. And I know that my PD is equal to PE. So writing down the equation and calculating everything, it <coughs> excuse me, it would be something like this. Pressure at point A plus 62.4 pounds per cubic feet times 8 inches divided by 12 to convert it to, to feet. And then plus, next one would be 846 pounds per um, cubic feet and then 2 divided by 12 feet and then I'm going to continue over here negative uh, again 4846 pounds per uh, cubic feet times this time 14 divided by 12 feet uh, times sine of 20 degrees and that would be equal to PE. Now if you calculate that it will result in the difference between pressure PA minus PE of 155 pounds per foot squared and that is your final answer. So in this time, it's obvious that PA is larger than PE because the sign of that is positive.